Today we're taking a look at James chapter 2, verses 5, 6, and 7, where we read this. Listen, my beloved brethren, has God not chosen the poor of this world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom which he promised to those who love him? But you've dishonored the poor man. Do not the rich oppress you and drag you into the courts? Do they not blaspheme that noble name by which you are called? You see, in the previous passage, James pressed the point that Christians should be fair to one another and not show partiality to the rich. In these three verses, James gives reasons why it's important to not be biased against the poor. First, Has God not chosen the poor of this world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom? Though it is easy for man to be partial to the rich, God isn't partial to them. In fact, there's a sense in which God has chosen the poor of this world. Number one, they're chosen to be rich in faith because the poor of this world simply have more opportunities to trust God. Therefore, they may be far more rich in faith than the rich man. There is a sense in which the rich may trust God, but the poor must trust God. I like what F.B. Meyer wrote. He said this, The poor man has no fortress in which to hide except the two strong arms of God. Secondly, the poor are chosen to be heirs of the kingdom because Jesus said that being rich makes it harder to enter into the kingdom of heaven. That's in Matthew chapter 19, verse 24. In the sense that the poor man more readily respond to God in faith, having fewer obstacles to the kingdom, we can see how God has chosen the poor. What's more, we can say that God has chosen the poor in the sense that when he added humanity to his deity and came to earth, Jesus Christ came into poverty. That's in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. Many people dread poverty and will do anything to escape it. We understand that. Yet the Son of God chose to be poor. He took one chance to live our life on this earth, and in doing so, he chose to be born into a family and a life of humble resources. Then James listed another reason why Christians should not be biased against the poor. He said, do not the rich oppress you and drag you into the courts? James reminded his readers that the rich often sing sin against them often because the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. That's in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10. For this reason alone, the rich are not worthy of the partiality that's often shown to them. Now, let's make this very clear. God has not only chosen the poor, yet we may say that he has chosen the poor first in the sense that Paul spoke of in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 26. For you see your calling, brethren, that not many wise are called according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. Now, we should also remind ourselves that God also never calls for partiality against the rich. If someone must judge in a dispute between a rich man and a poor man, They should let the law and the facts of the case decide the judgment instead of the economic class of those who are in the dispute. When we choose people by what we can see on the surface, rich or poor, then we miss the mind of God. Remember that Judas appeared to be much better leadership material than Peter appeared to be. If someone is poor in this world, Let them regard it as an opportunity to be rich in heaven and to improve their lot on earth. If someone is rich in this world, then let them remember that this in itself is no promise of riches of eternity, and they they must handle what God gives them rightly.